All right, it's the start of chapter three. We're solving two-step equations. We are almost done with equations. I say done, then we're gonna do inequalities. You'll see equations for the rest of the year, but really we're, we're spending a lot of time right now laying the foundation for solving equations. And at the heart of solving equations is what we call inverse operations, okay? Using the method called inverse operations. What do I mean by that? Inverse operations. Do the opposite. To do the opposite. If the number is positive, if the term is positive, I subtract. If multiplication is connected to my variable, I divide. If division is connected to my variable, I multiply. Inverse operation. Before, uh, in the equations that we've done previously, I did one set of inverse operations to solve. Now today, you're going to see that you just do inverse operations twice and you solve the equation. It's still the same process, except now you're just doing it twice. All right, so let's see what that looks like. In example one, we have 3x plus 7 equals negative 5. It's important that we remember our rules for positive and negative numbers, okay? So that doesn't fly out the window. That still applies. You are still allowed to use your calculator, so there's no reason to make a silly mistake. The first thing that I need to do is I need to move the number that is not connected to my variable. So 3 is clearly connected to my variable. 7 is not. So I'm going to move the 7 first to the other side of the equation. Subtract 7 from both sides. 3x equals what is negative 5 minus negative 7 or minus 7. It is negative 12. Then what do I do? How do I get x by itself? I divide both sides by 3. You see, you've done these things before. You just haven't done them both in the same equation. Okay? So move what is not connected to the variable first, and then multiply or divide. X equals negative 4. But you're not done. You have to go back and check your solution. On your homework, you're required to. On your quiz or your test, uh, it's going to be optional. However, that's how you can make sure that you didn't get any answers wrong. So we have 3 times negative 4 plus 7 equals negative 5. Now, in your calculators or even mental math, what is 3 times negative 4? Negative What's negative 12 plus 7? So on your checking, I need to see two steps. I need to see the substitution and the boxed checked answer. Negative 5 equals negative 5. Simplify both sides all the way and show me that they equal out. The answer is negative 4. Now I want you to do uh, the second problem the exact same way. All right, so we subtract 5 from both sides. 2a equals 12, divide both sides, a equals 6. Who got it right? a equals 6. Awesome, good job. All right, example 2. Now I'm just uh, facing just different signs, okay? So now I've got some division here. I've got some subtraction. Again, I always need to start with the what is not connected to my variable, what's not directly connected, which would be a negative 3. How do I get rid of a negative 3? I need to add 3 to both sides x over 2 equals 4. Now how do I solve for x? How do I solve for x, guys? I want to multiply both sides by 2. x equals 8. And then I plug it back in, and yes, 4 minus 3 is 1. Again, this, this step right here that I showed, um, you don't have to show that step on your homework. That's just basically showing you... Um, just the mental process that I went through to get to the fact that I do have a corrected or correct checked answer. All right, once you're done copying that down, I want you to do uh, the second one on your own. I do want to make a small change. This will help you on your homework. Um, I'm going to make a over three negative. I'm going to make a over. Actually, I'm going to do that in the next uh, example. For now, just solve it this way. 
A over 3 is positive. I'll, I'll make the next one negative. Okay, what do I do to both sides first? Someone raise your hand and tell me. Jared, I need to add what? Seven. Add by 7 both sides. Very good. Now I have A over 3 equals 24. Now what do I do, Samantha? Multiply 3. Multiply 3 by both sides. Very good. And I get 72. Raise your hand if you got 72. Awesome. Good job. Questions, guys. Any questions at all? Anything? If you missed it, do you see where you went wrong? Okay. All right. Moving on to example three. In example three now, we're solving an equation with negative coefficients. Um, now, this is going to go kind of far back, but does anybody remember what a coefficient is? What is a coefficient? Jonadab? Very good. It's got to be in a term with a variable. So you see what I'm underlining? Okay, negative 4y. The coefficient is the number part of that term. And it includes the sign. You say, well, that's the subtraction sign. It's the same thing. It means that 4y is negative. That's important that I remember that it's negative when I'm solving. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do still is I'm going to move the term that is not connected to the variable first. So is that a positive 7 or a negative 7? Positive. How do I know that? Because there's nothing in front of the term, right? If it was negative, there would be a negative sign there. So how do I get a positive 7 to move? I need to subtract it from both sides. Now, here's the important part. 4y is negative. I must bring down the entire term, including the negative. So since it's negative, I bring down negative 4y equals 12. Now I divide both sides. Here's the key. Okay, make sure you're listening. My variable cannot be negative. If my number, if there's a negative in front of the term, that number is negative, which means I must divide by a negative 4 both sides. y equals negative 3. y equals negative 3. All right, now when I check it, Again, I have to recognize my negative terms. 4 is negative and 3 is negative. What is negative 4 times negative 3? Negative 12. Positive 12. 7 plus 12 is 19, so it still works out. Again, if you put it in your calculator, you should get the correct answer also. All right, once you're done copying that down, I want you to do the second one on your own. Be mindful of that negative coefficient, guys. Make sure you take it with you to the other side of the equation. Maya, what do I do first? Very good. Subtract 10 from both sides. Now I bring down my negative 5a. Hayden, what do I do next? Very good. Divide both sides by negative 5a equals negative 7. Who got it right? Okay, awesome. Good job. All right, any questions? Now, I'm going to give you a problem that will help you on your homework. Okay, this question came up last class, so I think it's important that we uh, talk about it. All right, what if I had, let me find one. Uh, wrong section. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what? Okay, let's say I had uh, x, negative x over 8 plus 3 equals 10. Okay, well, what would I do first? Subtract what? Subtract 3 from both sides. All right, now I bring down my negative x over 8 equals, whoops, I forgot to subtract it from the side, equals 7. Now here's the question. I've got that negative out in front of the fraction. Which term is negative, the x or the 8? Does it matter? Technically, either of them can be negative. But remember what I told you. Can you have a negative variable in your answer? No. So it would make sense to take the negative with you when you multiply. So I would multiply both sides by a negative 8. What does that do? It brings the negative with me 
to the other side. And now x equals negative 56. Okay? So this step right here, guys, I had some uh, people struggling with that on their homework, so hopefully that will help you in that specific question. All right, any questions about negative coefficients? Eric? Um, I want to, like, check it. Um, I did negative 56 over 8 plus 3 equals 8. Mm -hmm. I got negative 7 plus 3. Uh, let's look at it. All right, so what he just asked was, you know, when you check it, it gets a little confusing. So let's, let's go ahead and check it because that's actually a really good question. When I plug in a negative 56, there's already a negative. And then I got a negative 56 over 8 here. That double negative cancels out to a positive. Plus 3 equals 10. So it's actually going to be a positive 7 plus 3 equals 10. And then 10 equals 10. So it checks out. All right. So since there was already a negative in the original, when I plug in another negative, the double negative cancels. That was a very good question. All right, one more example. I'm going to read you this problem. While I am reading it, I want you to try to mentally put together this equation. Here's my hints, okay? You need, an equation always has a what? Well, a variable, yes, but a equal sign. Write it on your paper. There you go, step one. Step one is an equal sign. It also has a total. So when I'm reading this, if you think you know the total, put that on one side of the equation. So the other side of the equation will be your variable. There will be a number that is not affected by the variable that stands alone, and then a number that needs to be attached to the variable. All right, so here we go. You're buying a drum set that costs $495. The music store lets you make a down payment of $150. You can pay the remaining costs in three equal monthly payments with no interest charge. How much is each monthly payment? Okay, so I start with an equal sign. That's a given. I've got an equal sign. Now, do I know the total? $495. That goes on one side. Now, I know that there is going to be a value in here, a number value in here, that is not affected by the variable. Is there a set number that's not going to be affected by anything else? What? $150. My down payment doesn't change no matter how many payments I make. I still made a down payment of $150. Now, am I subtracting the payments from that to give me my total? Total is what kind of operation? Total. It's adding. So I'm going to add the down payment plus what term? Write it on your papers. What do you think? How is, how is it going to be connected? All right, Alex, what did you write? Anybody write something? Nate? Nate? He wrote 3x, and he would be correct. Now, if you used a different variable, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. All right? And why did I write 3x? Why not 6x? Uh, why? Because that's how many payments I'm making. I'm making three payments. If I was making six payments, I would write 6x. Okay? Three times, but I don't know how much that payment is. So now I can solve. What do I do first? What do I do first? Subtract 150 from both sides. Now 3x equals 345. And what do I do to both sides? Divide by 3. $115 per payment. I guess I should have labeled. How many points are you going to miss if you forget to label? Two. Two. One. Minus 1. <coughs> Minus 1. $115 per month is your payment. If you understand that, that's everything you need to know for 3.1.